Hello, everybody. How do I sound? Let me know in the chat. Hello. Welcome back. It's been a while. I'll be here in just a second. Well, I am here, but I'll be there in just a second. I'll... I will be on in just a sec. And I'm testing audio, and I need to know how I sound. Okay, okay, I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Hello and welcome to the live stream. Last time on Club Crochet Live. What if I what if I had like a last time on? That would be really fun actually. <laughs> with with like Jack Gurgle doing like uh you know, last time on Survivor, but it's not Survivor, it's Club Crochet. Anyhow, hi guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Today, we are going to be crocheting a little tiny otter. And what's great about this otter is that he can, oh, you can open and close his hands. Okay, boop. So he can hold things. So we're gonna make a little otter with a little tiny heart that he's holding for my significant otter, Jules, who's in the other room. And we're gonna give it to her afterwards. Even though I have like a million of these otters and it was her idea originally, so it's not really a surprise for her, but it's still a nice thing to do. So that's the plan for today. Uh, and for this, the, here's what you're gonna need. Let's go through the materials first and stuff, and then we'll go uh, and we'll do all the intro stuff. For this pattern, what you're gonna need is, first off, you're gonna need the pattern. You can find the pattern right here at clubcrochet.com slash otter. Um, it is only $2.99, so it's nice and cheap, uh, and it's available with a membership if you have one. You also will need some yarn. I'm using all worsted weight cotton yarn today, but I think it would be really cool to use fuzzy yarn. If you had fuzzy like yarn in the right colors, um, that's something I think I'll be doing sooner or later. But today we're using worsted weight cotton yarn in two colors, beige and brown. That's all you need. Um, because I'm using all worsted weight yarn, I'm using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook. Oh wait, I was wrong. Actually, you also need black yarn. You also need a little bit of black yarn. So I'll find, I'm sure I have some like at my feet probably. No, no, whatever. I'll find some in a sec. You also need some thread. Uh, I like using thread to make the mouth. So I'm gonna be using black thread for the mouth and then white thread for the whiskers. You also need some little tiny magnets for the hands. You can also use uh, probably pipe cleaners in the hands instead if you wanted to but I'm gonna be using these little strong magnets. I like using two in each hand. 
Um, and I'm going to be using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook, a darning needle that's crimped at the end to make it easier to sew in ends, and a pair of scissors. Look at these cool new scissors I got. They look so cool. Um, yeah, so that's all the materials you need. Now, if you want, I actually have kits available, um, and that is, there are links in the description below with literally the exact same materials I'm using in this video. We have kits for in the, oh man, I just saw it. I just saw a, hold on, hold on. I need to, I need to move this around so that I can see the, cause someone donated. Okay, well let's talk about how you can support this channel if you are interested in supporting and you can. So there are a few different ways you can support this channel. The first way and the best way is with a membership to the website. Uh, my website has uh, memberships that you can, let me try that again. With a membership to Club Crochet, you get a bunch of exclusive content as well as you get to support this channel. You get things like early access to future patterns, um, access to the full library of patterns. So every single pattern that I come out with on the, my website, you have access to with a membership, including this little otter pattern. Um, you also get monthly kits mailed directly to your door with all the materials you need. And if you were a pro member at the end of uh, January, then you got a kit at in the beginning of February for this pattern. So you, if you are a pro member, I'm sure there's some people in the chat right now that are a pro member and are making this with us right now with all the materials. You can get all that stuff uh, by just going to clubcrochet.com. Memberships start at only $5 a month and you can even get a free trial. It's the best way to support this channel. If you still wanna support this channel but you don't wanna get a membership, well, there's a few different other ways you can do so. You can buy merch in the shop. There's a bunch of different kits available for purchase. There are stickers. Boop, boop. There are t-shirts. I'm wearing one. It says Church of Perch. Um, there, yeah, there's just a bunch of things you can get in the shop. I think I'm gonna be adding a lot more kits and stuff very soon. There we go. And the last way you can support if you so wish is with a donation. If you donate, you can go right here, clubcrochet.com slash tip, and you can donate right there, and it goes towards, see that little bar right there? We're trying to fill that bar up. If, you can, if we can fill that bar up, we, uh, we will be doing a really big giveaway, and we only have uh, 66 more buckaroos, and we do a big giveaway where everybody can win money to the Club Crochet shop. And we already got one. So, Cooperlicious, thank you so much. She says, happy Valentine's Day. Do you have any plans for a dog pattern this year? Ooh, I don't yet, but I think I will. I think that's a really, really good idea. I was working on a cat, uh, like, last night, just for fun, um, because I had an idea for how to do the legs really easy. So, and I could totally transition that into a dog. So, that's a good idea. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna think about that. Um, and for donating, you get a little character that goes in the background here. So we're going to add one for Cooperlicious. Let's see. Let's see. It's Valentine's Day. Let's do something nice and sweet. What do we have? What do we have? Let's, oh, 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 I got an idea. Let's see if I can find it. I got a perfect sweet because it's literally sweet. Oh, but this, this is good too. I'm, okay, I'm going to save that one for a sec. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got something for you. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, uh, well, now I don't have the straw, so, oh well. But this is for you, Cooperlicious. Thank you so much for your support. A little strawberry milkshake. Perfect for Valentine's Day. A strawberry milkshake, a sweet for you. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support very much, Cooperlicious. Also, it comes up on screen, like right around here. Um, I'm going to put this guy to the side because we're going to make one anyhow. And I'm just gonna get crocheting and chatting with the chat. Chatting with the chat. Hey everybody, what brand of yarn do I recommend? Well, for what I'm using right now, it's, uh, I believe, Lily Sugar and Cream. Um, that's my favorite worsted weight cotton yarn that I like to use. But, um, but for fuzzy yarn, uh, there's a yarn called Buttercream, I think. From uh, there, it's available at Joann's. That I think is pretty cool. Um, good for fuzzy yarn, but I don't know if there's a beige and a brown that's really that they have anymore. So 
You'll have to experiment. I think it'd be... Oh, okay, good to know. Thank you very much. Someone says the music... Oh, Mel Bell. Hello, Mel. She says that the music's a little loud, so let's turn that down a little bit. Let me know if you think that music is too loud, too quiet, things like that in the chat. I'm reading them. Um, also, what we're going to be making today is the little tiny flat heart um, that is that you can see the little guy holding right there. That's the newest pattern to the website. Um, it was added on Wednesday, so it is brand spanking new. And I actually teach how to do it in a bunch of different sizes. So you can make it really tiny, really big. Um, yeah, for the past three years, I've actually come, come out with a new heart pattern for each year. So the first time was a... Whoa, <laughs> Dan Simmons. Dan Simmons says, da, 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 da. 10 for Club Crochet and 10 for, le for the belated birthday girl. That's Jules. Oh my gosh, thank you. I'm going to have to get her something for that. Uh, happy Valentine's Day. We just celebrated a six year wedding anniversary on the 12th. Wow. Congratulations, Dan Simmons. And uh, yeah, it's been five years. Jules and I have been together for five years on. Uh, just a just a week or two ago, so that is pretty cool. And you know what? I'm going to put out for you, Dan. Two characters. Well, let's see. Do I do two characters, or do I do the big? Let's do two. These are for you, Dan. It's a little us, because since you mentioned us, this is the birthday girl. It was her birthday last weekend, and it was great. We had a really really good time for her birthday. So, these are going out. A little a little Jules and a little me. Thank you so much, Dan. I'm going to get... Let's see, maybe I'll do something fancy for dinner with that $20. Thank you so much. Oh, what do you think she'd want? One, two, three, four, five, six. She can't eat too many solid foods right now. Where did we meet? Because she just got... Uh, she just got mouth surgery not that long ago. So, she is... She has to eat mushy foods. Where did we meet? We met, we actually met on Tinder. I know, I know. We met on Tinder. It went very well. We had a first date, she was wearing a very cute blue dress. We met at a bar. And then a few years ago, we actually replicated the date. We went to that bar again, and we said, let's pretend to be different people. And so we were, we were gonna pretend to be like completely different people. And I go, show up at the bar she's already sitting down and i tap her on the shoulder and i went oh hello miss are you juliana <laughs> she didn't think it was as funny as i did <laughs> actually she did think it was really funny but she was just so taken aback like i thought we were gonna be not that <laughs> but i couldn't help myself it just was too funny to not do that <laughs> Who is Dan? Dan is, uh, well, Dan's been in the chat before. Actually, it's not Dan. It's I think it's Kim. I think Kim has been in the chat before. Yeah, yeah, Kim. So Kim and Dan are very big supporters and they have actually, they've supported so much that they have spawned a few, um, a few giveaways. Uh, and looks like they're pretty close to spawning another one now. The hooked one is really cool. I have a, I have a little thing set up for whenever this bar gets done. It's like a giveaway uh, game show where everybody can can like guess answers to a questionnaire, and if you get all the answers right, doesn't matter um, doesn't matter how many people get them all right, but if you get them all right, you win some money to the to the Club Crochet website. So that's the idea. I still have to film it, but it's all written, all ready to go. And our host is Jack Gurgle, who you'll see at the halftime show. Today, I've got actually a lot of things I would like to show you in the halftime show. Um, Jamie joined the Discord. Thanks so much for joining, Jamie. Yeah, we do have a Discord if you'd like to, to join. So did Lulu. Um, Lulu's Taco Dog. I like the name. Um, yeah, we have a Discord channel if you'd like to join and chat with us outside of these live streams. You can find a link in the description down below. Wow, we have 100 people watching right now. Thank you so much, everybody who's watching. Thank you for joining. Make sure to like down below. Last week, we actually got a... Um, I, I did a little... Or last week, two weeks ago, our last live stream, we did the Burb live stream. 
and we um, did a, I, I made you guys a deal where if we got over 300 likes, I would do a new burb pattern and it way surpassed that. I think we're at like 550 or something now. So we're gonna do a new burb pattern and I'm gonna show you it in the halftime show. I'm gonna show the, the options on what the new burb pattern is. I think I might do more than one though. I think I might do more than one. I got an idea. I got some ideas. Courtney, thank you so much. Courtney donates an extra five. Oh, I forgot to put something out for, wait, did I? No, no, I put something out for Dan. Courtney. Oh, Courtney, I know, perfect thing. The thing that I keep meaning to ship you and I keep forgetting, I'm so sorry, I owe you this. I really owe you it. Um, so this is actually, this was made specifically for Courtney. She supported on my Patreon page and I, I haven't finished it because I'm a doofus. So I really need to, I really need to ship this over to you. So I'm going to give her, give it a little heart too. This is your, this is your orc, Courtney. And I know you've seen it before, but I mean, who else is going to, this needs to go out for you. And we got a little heart now. And actually she still needs a name. So we need to. You need to give me a name for this this guy. I'm gonna ship it out to you. I need to get pictures of it, and I want to give him a, her a little necklace. Now, one quick thing: uh, if you are supporting, um, if you support with this clubcrochet.com/tip, it actually goes to this. If you do a super chat, I get it, and I really, really appreciate it. But it doesn't add to this bar because I don't know how to make it work for the bar. So actually, maybe I can just like manually do it really quick. Donations. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna manually add it this time. Update. There. Did that update? Yeah. Okay. I manually did it, so I just added it to it. But um, in the future, now that's like the best way to do it because you can donate outside of this live stream too. So if people want to, if people are watching the live stream, um, not live, and they still want to donate and add to the funds it still goes towards this bar. Like I watch it throughout the week and see if it gets added to it to see if it completes the bar in time for me to do it for the next live stream. You named her Snot. Perfect. Oh my gosh, she is such a snot. She's such a punk rocker too. I love her. I'll have to, I'll finish it up this week and ship it out. Thank you so much for your support, Courtney. You have been so supportive and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? June Monkey donates five. Thank you so much, June Monkey. Okay, June Monkey. We're gonna do this little fella right here. Where'd she go? There she is. A pink. I think all the support should have something pink related or, or red or something, even though we didn't have that. But I mean, we'll have these guys in the corner and we'll start like, growing the whole thing. There we go. There we go. There we go. Um, okay, where was I? The hands are the trickiest part f for this pattern because you have to make them really tiny. But the good thing about this is that these are this is the only part of the pattern that you actually need to um, sew on is the hands. The rest of it is just made in one piece. And if you didn't know, um, every single pattern that I come out with on the website has a full video tutorial. So I'm not going to be teaching how to crochet this uh, this otter in this video because it actually has a full video tutorial available if you purchase the pattern for $2.99. It's like I go through every single part of it and I crochet all of it with you in a video. It's like an hour and a half long. <laughs> Took a long time. But... They're really fun to do those videos. I feel like I'm getting really, really good at them. I'm so excited to show you guys all the new stuff I've been working on this week. Oh yeah, I didn't finish saying. Uh, so for the past three years, I've come out with a new heart every year, uh, a new heart pattern. So last year I did um, this heart, which is a 3D like amigurumi heart, you know? And it's really easy. This is a really easy pattern to make. So this is what I made last year for Valentine's Day. The year before, I made an anatomical heart, which I actually don't have one available because someone purchased it. So I sent it out to them. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't like an anatomical human heart. It's really cool. 
And then this year we did the flat hearts. And what I really like about the flat hearts is that there's, you can make them so many different sizes. So you can make like really big ones and really tiny ones. I don't, did I, do I have the tiny one? I have like an itty, itty bitty bitty one somewhere around here that's made with embroidery yarn. Hmm, I don't know where it is. Tina, thank you, Tina. All the way from Denmark. All the way from Denmark. And we're gonna go, oh, I do have an animal. Perfect, I was wrong. This is for you, Tina. Thank you so much for your support. Now that I was mentioning it, you get a whole Amikurumi anatomical heart. Boom, baby. Here, look, I'll, I'll even. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tina. We'll put it in the corner. I know it's a big one. It's a big one, so it'll have to be in the background probably for, <laughs> for a while since it's so big. <laughs> okay. Did I do, did I? Did I do that? No, I just need a few more stitches here for this arm. Oh no, I forgot, I forgot. I gotta undo the arm. I always forget this in the arms. You have to do, you have to add the magnets before you decrease it down or else it just, it's too hard to get the magnets in there. So I have to, de I have to undo some of it. There we go, get that out. Yeah, it's, it, it's anatomically correct. Like these are all the right, um, I, I can't remember all the names. They're in the, the pattern, but there's like the vena cava and the, it, this is the aortic arch. So you get to learn about like what your heart looks like kind of too while you're making it, which is kind of fun. I think it's pretty cool. It's a pretty neat little thing. Miriam donates another five. Oh my God, we're so close. How close are we here? Oh, it's getting covered up. We are at, Looks like, oh man, it's hard to see it. I can't tell, I can't tell how many we have there. Miriam, thank you. I am gonna add something else that is pink or red. Let's see, pink or red, what do we got, what do we got? Oh, here we go, a cobalt. Perfect, this is still in the rough drafts, I know. It's ridiculous that it's still in the rough drafts, but there is a rough draft pattern for this. This is a cobalt um, from D&D &D and a bunch of fuzz from Jiminy, my cat. Um, <laughs> it's a little girl, Cobalt. I don't think she has a name yet. If you want, Miriam, if you have any suggestions, let me know. I'm gonna put, we're gonna put it right there just for you, Miriam. Thank you for your support. Okay, let's keep going here. I haven't even finished one arm yet. How long have I been going? Oh my gosh, uh, geez Louise, so slow. I'm so slow. Where am I at here? Where am I? What year is it? Huh? I. Jules and I do this thing all the time where we'll just start going. Huh? Eh. Hey. We'll like slowly get older and older as we, as we do it. So we start with just like, huh? Huh? What? Eh? And sometimes we pretend we're sleeping. <laughs> it's so dumb. <laughs> uh, wow, there's more than one Miriam in the chat today. Hello to all the Miriams out there. You know, you don't hear very many Miriams. It's a very cute name. You could have you could have a lot of nicknames too, probably. Mary. Riam. <laughs> you know, Riam. What a great nickname. Oh my God, there's another Miriam spelled totally different with a Y. Miriam. Wow, you, there's so many of them in the chat. I am so glad that you find these live streams interesting, Hannah. I do too. It's so fun to hang out with you guys, tell you all about my new, my weeks and stuff. Oh, hey, I forgot to tell you about our weekend. So last weekend uh, for Jules's 30th birthday, a bunch of friends, we all, uh, a bunch of friends and I, well, not that many. It was, it was eight of us total. We all got tested and we all, well, we quarantined first and then we got tested and then we all went to a cabin in um, Yosemite for a little trip for her 30th birthday. And it was so cool. I'm so glad we did it. It was like crazy fun. 
just being able to talk with friends in person again for like the first time in what seven eight months was crazy awesome like it was it, just a big relief it's something that i just didn't remember how much i missed them you know you forget how much you miss your friends until you until you get to hang out with them again it's just such a hassle you know having to quarantine having to do a test and all this other stuff before we can even hang out it's rough yes miriam thank you for thank you i did remember to put in the the magnet on this one this time around yeah covid does suck i agree i haven't had it but it sucks just in general yeah i think um luckily the vaccinations are are getting tossed around a bit now in california we are allowing vaccinations for people 16 and older that have a pre-existing condition which is really good i wish i could get it but i am i do not have any pre-existing conditions and i'd rather the vaccine go to the people that need it first like frontline workers and stuff Okay, so we got one of the arms done. See, it's basically just like a teardrop that you make. You decrease down to like hold the magnet into place. It's pretty cool. I, I like, it's a very simple arm pattern. I'm thinking what I'd like to do, um, and I've told you guys this in the chat many times before, but I think something that I'd like to do on the website is add um, a bunch of, oh, I forgot to add something. Did I forget to add? Oh, no, no, I added this from Miriam. That's right. Um, I think something I'd like to do on the website is a build your own amigurumi section where you can actually like choose what kind of arms you want to add, what kind of legs, and then it'll take sections of patterns with video tutorials and put them all together. Me and my friend want to make that really bad, but we have other things we want to make on the website first. We're actually coming out with something on the website in um, like next week. We're going to add a thing on the website where you can um, you can favorite lessons and stuff so you can make your... You can add your favorites. You can add, uh, um, and then you can see what other people are favoriting, and you can see your most recently visited pattern. Just trying to make it more, um, just the website in general, like more usable and fun for people to, to use. Just adding a couple new features. We've been adding a lot of features recently, actually. So I think it's pretty cool. I think the website's come really, really coming together. Um, and the fact that you can add it to your to your home screen on your phone and it behaves like an app is really cool. Uh, if you didn't know that, it is a neat little feature that you can do. Or if you just add the website to your home page, it, um, it gets added as if it were an app. I made it like have a thumbnail and everything. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Hello, Aquatic Luna, by the way. Aquatic Luna is a very much regular here. A drive through only bank. That's actually pretty cool. That seems really useful. I don't think I've ever been to a drive through bank. Been to drive through coffee shops, but no drive through banks. So Jules and I have been watching a bunch of Marvel movies recently. A lot of people know I, I am a big Marvel fan just in general. So we've been watching through all the old movies, um, going in order, but skipping the ones that we don't want to watch. Like we didn't watch Iron Man 2 because I don't really like Iron Man 2. But... We've been we've been kind of on a Marvel kick since we've been watching WandaVision. I don't know if you guys have been watching WandaVision. It's on Disney Plus and it's really good. I'm not going to say anything about the show because there are a lot of spoilers, but it is a good show and if you haven't watched it yet, I very much suggest checking it out. It is worth it is worth a view. At least watch like 3 episodes. The first two can be a little bit slow, but then it gets like Real good. Real good. Okay, so I think that's... Yeah, okay, so now is when we want to add 
the magnets. Get in there, magnets. Fandom random. Fandom random, I heard that you said something about you're looking to try to get a job. Cool, congratulations. First job ever? My first job. Uh, yeah, none of your friends are caught up yet. That is so difficult. I, we had, um, I was talking with a friend yesterday about, about it, and I was just, they were like, oh yeah, I haven't watched much of it yet, and I was like, oh, I watch it, I want to talk about it. <laughs> um, my first job ever was working at a donut shop, Stan's Donuts in Thousand Oaks, California, was my first job. And basically what happened was I had gone, it was, I had gone to a sleepover. I was, I think, 14 or 15 at the time. I got into a sleepover at a friend's house. Um, Eddie, that was his friend, that was my friend's name. Still friends. And on my way home, uh, my dad said, hey, meet us at the donut shop. And he knows, you know, I love donuts. I'm a, I am a big proprietor of donuts <laughs> donut proprietor is funny uh so i met him at the donut shop and the owner of the shop was there and my dad was like hey so we've been talking about you i had just woken up my hair was like garbage and i just looked like i just looked like a teenage boy and he was like he was like yeah you want a job here i was like what um i guess and my dad was like yeah he wants a job and the guy goes, do you know how to, you know how to broom? And I was like, I mean, probably. <laughs> I don't think I've ever, I don't think I really swept up much before that at all. And he said, well, grab a broom and put on an apron and start working. So I started working that day. Underage. I wasn't definitely not supposed to be working. But I did. And, uh, yeah, I started working right then and there. And it was a great job. And here's why it was a great job. I got to go in, I would work in the middle of the day because I got off school at noon because I scheduled my high school like really, really well where I could just be done at noon for school. And so I'd go in at noon, go to work. No one would be working there. Or I mean, no one would come in because it's noon at a donut shop. Like who's coming in in the middle of the day to a donut shop? So what I do is uh, I just eat a bunch of donuts and I'd take a nap in the back. I'd wait for the bell to ring, and then if the bell rang, I'd wake up, go out there, and <laughs> help someone out. It was it was the best job ever. I was a terrible worker, but it was a really good job. I loved it. And I got to take home so many donuts afterwards, it was great. I think I like, I probably, I think my dad's actually in the chat right now. I'm pretty sure that I added at minimum like 15, 16 pounds to my dad's belly just from working at the donut shop because I got to take home so many free donuts and then he would take them to work. It was great. Good times. Good times were had. I'm just grabbing black yarn and getting ready here. Good times were had. Yeah. Yeah, I would take home so... I would take home boxes, like multiple boxes. I think like 10 boxes of just donuts because they would make me throw them away and I didn't want to throw them away. So I would just pack them up into boxes and take them home. And then one time the the boss was like, you can't keep taking home all these boxes. You're wasting all my boxes. And I'm like, I mean, I'll pay for the boxes. We're talking pennies here. Yes, dad, you you definitely passed that on to me. My dad says he's a donut donutaholic in the chat. And... Uh, I have gotten that gene from him. Yeah, you definitely should get a job at the donut shop. It's a great move. Um, you get to learn what your favorite donut is pretty quick. My favorite donut is, um, I, I love sprinkled. Just a regular old pink sprinkled donut. I think they're perfect. I hate um, old fashioned donuts. Not a fan. I think they're gross. And yeah, I just think they're nasty. My cousin was telling me that she really likes old-fashioned donuts, and I thought that was disgusting. She also really likes Twizzlers. Twizzlers. Remember, you know, tw 
like the garbage version of a licorice, of like a red vine, that's a Twizzler. Ew, 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 100%. Those are disgusting. Shout out in the chat. If you like Twizzlers, actually don't let me know. I don't wanna know. Don't you dare tell me in the chat if you like Twizzlers, cause Twizzlers are gross. <laughs> they really are though. They taste like plastic. I think I've told, I think I've had this conversation with you guys before. Oh my gosh, yeah, the peanut butter. My dad just said, remember the peanut butter filled ones? We They had these, they called them the, um, they called them the PB&J donut. They were peanut butter filled donuts with, with jam. Oh my God, they're so good. Aquatic Luna. How dare you? How dare you enjoy Twizzlers? Yeah, see, Jasmine's got it. We don't trust people that enjoy Twizzlers. Cause, because you're wrong. That's the big thing. Is It's because you're wrong about your enjoyment of Twizzlers. <laughs> it's not an opinion. It's just a fact. I think they should make it a law. If you like Twizzlers, you're wrong. Ugh, Jamie. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna regret your love for Twizzlers one day. <laughs> when your body realizes that they're just plastic. I say that and and yet I love red vines. And red vines are also kind of plasticky. But Twizzlers are disgusting. It's a good name though. They're just gross. Anyhow. I'm on the I'm on the head now. If you are following along, I'm crocheting the head. Remember last live stream when I made those little um those little owls? I'll put one out for the next uh, super chat. I remember when I made that last one like super duper quick. That was cool. You used to use Twizzlers as straws. I mean, they're essentially just plastic, so that makes sense. <laughs> when I become president, Twizzlers will be outlawed, um, and so will cucumbers. I hate cucumbers, too. And you know what's great about getting rid of all the cucumbers? Is that you also get rid of all the pickles, so it's like a double whammy. It's like you it's a win-win situation. Get rid of Twizzlers, or get rid of cucumbers, get rid of pickles. Win-win. Okay, so where are we at? I keep, I always lose track when I'm doing this one. So I should just put a little stitch marker right here. Where, do, what do I get for a stitch marker, huh? What do we get? Hey, 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 who, where? Oh shoot, I cut the wrong part. Oh well, I'm gonna regret that later. One day I'm gonna come back to this blue, blue, embroidery thread and I'm gonna be like, or purple, purple embroidery thread. I'm gonna be like, what? Why is it cut in the middle? Oopsies. Because of that one time. <laughs> Jasmine. <laughs> Do not take my pickles. <laughs> Your pickles are an abomination. <laughs> Wait, is that the end of the round? Yeah. yeah, that is. One, two, three, four, five. Your pickles are an abomination. They are disgusting. Ew, fried pickles? You guys have serious issues. You should go see a therapist. <laughs> pickles are gross. Bite me. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Aquatic Luna. We can agree on something. A no to pickles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Nine. Jeslyn Stuber says, hey Louie, I'm a new subscriber and I'm getting into crochet. I wanted to thank you for, oh, thank you. I'm so glad you enjoy the patterns. They would be nothing without people making them. Uh, 
Ah. I will fight you! Band of Random, bring it on. I got... I've got that strong, pickleless energy. You you don't realize. Look at how tidy my arm is. <laughs> um, you don't realize the weakness you have due to your pickle consumption. <laughs> okay, see? Now we got a little stitch marker. Now I know where the end of the round is. Huzzah! Ew. Ew. Coffee and Crochet just said, uh, just introduced me to a disgusting reality that apparently in the world there are pickled pig's feet. And her grandma likes them. Oh, pickled pig's feet. That's disgusting. Hey, yesterday I found out all these things that a bunch of Gen Zers say about Millennials. They, they they roast millennials for certain things. And I found out what uh, what us millennials are being roasted for. And I think it's so funny because some of them are super accurate. One of them was parting your hair. Like parting your hair on the side. Apparently, millennials all part their hair in the middle. Or they have them like just like a little poop. I don't know. I thought that was really funny because I clearly do part my hair from one side. And then another thing... Was you guys can let me know all you Gen Zers in the chat. Let me know what are uh, what are things that Millennials do that I don't even recognize that is something that we do. Apparently, another one was wearing skinny jeans. Skinny jean, what is it? Skinny jeans is a Millennial thing, and I thought, what are you guys wearing? Big, like, like saggy pants. That's so weird. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I'm currently wearing skinny jeans right now. Ew, your grandpa's... My grandpa's loved pig's feet. Ew, that's so gross. Why wouldn't we part our hair to the side? That's what I thought. I don't think you guys are crazy. I just think that... Uh, that the... The sty styles change, you know? And I just, just think it's a... It's a it's interesting. Ew. Oh my god. Yeah, I would have PTSD if my grandpa, if watching my grandpa eat a pig's foot too. <laughs> Nicola wants to know how I chat about something completely irrelevant to whatever I'm making simultaneously. Um,. I do that, the the way that I crochet and talk about things that have nothing to do with crochet is by recognizing that a lot of my stitches are just gonna be single crochet stitches. So as long as I know where the end of the round is, I can know like, all right, so like currently where I'm at, I know that that whole round had to be just single crochet stitches. So it was easy, you know? And now this round, I have to do four single crochets and then I have to decrease. So I know that the first four stitches I can just Tune out, think about other things, and do single crochets, and then, boom, now I'm on my decrease. And then I know, okay, I'm back on to single crochets again. I don't know. I just, uh, I just know, I think it's just that I can recognize what stitches are where in my pattern, and it really lets me um, tune out of what I'm making. I've also been crocheting a long time. One, two, three, four, five. Parachute pa pants are coming back. Oh, I heard that. Oh, wait, a subscriber. Oh, that's interesting. Why does it do that? Sometimes it, like, turns on the subscriber notifications. And I'm like, I didn't ask you to do that. I didn't ask that. So how do I do, how do I fix that? Let's see. Don't nurse. Do, 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 do. No. No, wait, stop. I don't want those notifications. Oh, boy. No, no. No, 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 it's not that one. No, oh, okay, wait, I found it, it's in here. Boom, boom, this one, no, this one. Yeah, that's the one, the alert box. Turn off subscribers, we don't need to see that. There we are. There we are. 
Okay, where am I? Who am I? What what year is it? Chicken's feet. I just feel like eating feet is a bad idea. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm in the minority. <laughs> but I think eating feet is weird. <laughs> that seems strange to me. I don't like to eat feet. Sue me. <laughs> Zoe says that Gen Zers think that bucket hats look cool. They never did. All right, so now we are on to, yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Us, us millennials are gonna get roasted for things in the future for sure. I mean, the, the acceptance of social media in general, I think we're gonna get like, like Gen Zers are gonna look at us and they're gonna be like, you guys really screwed us up by making all this, uh, these social media things. And we're gonna be like, yeah, I agree. Because social media, is burning your brain out. It really is. It's burning my brain out. Can we... Miriam wants to name the cobalt pickle. Was that the other... That was... Oh, Miriam. Dang you. You do get to name it. You want to name it pickle? We can name it pickle. I don't love the name, but it's your cobalt name. <laughs> Uh, uh, Jamie, is it because of the feet thing? The Mexican family's gonna come for me. No, please, don't take my tacos. Horse leg. What? What? Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 wait, wait. Gets Charlie horses in his legs. Okay, I thought you were saying he eats horse legs. I was like... Where do you get access to horse legs? <laughs> My dad says millennials wait too long to get married. Ooh. <laughs> well, you have to realize we don't have any money. We are broke. <laughs> back in back in your day. Cost a lot less. Also, we realize that a lot of you know, marriages don't work out. You gotta be, you gotta be sure. You gotta live together. You gotta try, you know, life. Ooh, Charlie says, could you make this as a burb mask? Absolutely you could. This could definitely be a burb mask. Yeah, someone said on Facebook when I posted this, a picture of this, they were like, oh my gosh, you've conditioned me. I thought there was gonna be a burb head under that otter head. I thought that was really funny. I thought that was very funny, yes. Oh, yes, it was very funny. Oh, Sasha, thank you. Sasha says, can't stay, but happy Valentine's Day and have a fantastic... Thank you so much, Sasha. Let's see, what do we got for Sasha today? Let's add something to it. Let's see, something, something colorful. Something colorful. What do we got that's colorful here? Santa Claus? No, that's not the right. That's the wrong time. You're too late, Santa. Get out of here. What? Who? Where? What year is it? Oh, let's do a Koopa. A Koopa. Oh, what's this? What the? No, no, no. Koopa. A Koopa for Yupa. It's a little red Koopa. This is an old pattern of mine. I don't even have it available anymore because uh, I think I could do it better and I took it down. There's no video tutorial and I always like a video tutorial. But anyhow, this is for you, Sasha. Thank you for your support. And I hope you have a great day. We're gonna go like this. Right there. Right there. Right there. Oh wait, we gotta add that to the, um, we'll add that to the donation thing real quick. Oh man, we only need 25 more bones. 25 more dollars to get to the goal to do a giveaway next week. Pretty close, pretty close. 
Oh, thanks for letting me know, Fandom Random. Fandom Random says in the chat that uh, they thought I should know that they're eating a pickle right now. Probably to spite me. <sighs> you know... You're terrible. Pickles. Ugh. Ugh. My gosh, you guys are just telling me the most... In Denmark, they eat pig's liver. I don't know why, but pig's liver doesn't seem nearly as bad to me as a pig. Um, oh, no, I dropped it. Oh, I'll grab it in a sec. As a pig uh, foot. It's like, I mean, pigs aren't really using their liver that much. Like, how much are they drinking, you know? But, <laughs> but they're using their feet, like, all the time. I think it's actually supposed to go up here. I think I'm supposed to put the eye there. Look at his weird eyes. He's like, whoa. Because they're not on the same row. We gotta go up here, I think. Like that. Let's see. Let's look at let's look at our finished one and see where I put the eyes on that one. Oh yeah, that was right. I did it right. I did it right. <laughs> You're eating it specifically because I said no. Fried chicken feet. There's no meat on a chicken foot. I just don't get you guys. It just seems crazy. Okay. Now we're adding. Now we need. Here's what we need. Here's the thing. What's happening here is, like, here. here's what's going on. All right, so here's the thing. Here's what's happening. Now here's the thing that's happening right now. Here's what's happening. <laughs> Am I driving anybody crazy? Is what's going? On. What? Huh? Who? What year? Okay. Get that out of you. Oh, we actually don't need this end anymore. Oh. Oh. Aquatic Luna. A oh, one dollar. Thank you very much, Aquatic Luna. I got something for you. Thank you for your for your support, and for your support. Oh, one dollar, huh? One dollar, one dollar. Let's see what we got. What we got? What we got? What we got? How about a burp? How about a burp? Tell the pink, pink burp. Oh, from the live stream from last week. This is for you. Well, yeah, this is for you, Aquatic Luna. Thank you. Look at all the pink. We're getting pink. There we are. There we go. And then this goes like that, and then this goes like that. You see, you see, and then you do that, and then you do one of these. Oh wait, I was supposed to do that twice. Like that. Yay, a burb! <laughs> trip a little, trip a little. How you doing, trip a little little? Oh, yes, I have heard of that. I have heard of that legend in Korea, the nine-tailed fox. You know how I've heard of it? Uh, in Lovecraft Country, it's a show on HBO. Um, there's one of those creatures in that show. I think we're gonna go even one more. I like to make the nose really big on my otters because they have they actually have like really big noses. I have seen an otter in real life. A wild sea otter before. Because they're they're native to California. What? Oh, oh, oh. Anna, uh, Anna says, what if I want to do a much bigger version of some of your creations? That is a great question. Uh, the easiest, quickest way is to use chunky or bulky yarn. In fact, some people have done using um, like giant velvet yarn, 
have done my uh, the Triceratops pattern to be like really big, like this big with just big yarn. And it's the exact same pattern, you just need to use bigger yarn. That's the, that is the easiest way to do it. You can like alter the pattern slightly and like make, you know, um, change the pattern to like make them bigger using the same size yarn, but it's a lot of work. Um, you're, you're essentially writing, writing a whole new pattern by doing that. Bye BB. See you next Sunday. I have an idea for next Sunday, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet. I had an idea last night, but I got I got to think it through a little bit more. I think this is where I go. Yeah, that's it. So see what I do for the mouth here. So we go over and we go into there. And we go over. <clears throat> then we go over and we go into there. Lauren, thank you for the super chat. Again, um, I will add it to the donation thing. But in uh, it's best if you donate with this thing now. Clubcrochet.com slash tip. I still very much appreciate it. But YouTube does take a big, like a relatively decent cut. I think they take like 30% of, um, of my super chat. So that's kind of a bummer. So that's why we're using this new thing. Also, I couldn't get this bar to work out without it. <laughs> but thank you so much, Lauren. I still very, very much appreciate the support. And we're going to do... Let's do this. We'll do this guy. This octopus. This fancy pants octopus. You know what I really like about this fancy pants octopus? Is this. It's his little monocle. It's made out of uh, wire. And I just... I folded it around and I just made it kind of like... I don't know. I'm just proud. I'm just proud of, of how the monocle looks. So this is for you. Thank you so much. Lauren. We put it right here and he will look at everything. Gotta make sure it looks good in the video. I'm getting hidden in the back here. There we go. Thank you so much for your support. Oh, I gotta add it to the donation thing. Whoop, 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 whoop. We're gonna go to eighty one. Oh, we're so close. Twenty more. Less than twenty. I'm gonna pull this thing down. Like that. See by going around there, going around that little bit of yarn, it pulls the pulls it down so it makes it more of a like a little smile. I really like that. I'll do it on this side too. See, I go around this, back in, and it pulls it down. Like that. Makes it into more of a little little smile. I like that. I like that. And then I, I like to pull the other one tight, and then I kind of like make it more rounded, so, it's, so it does more of a round smile. Pull this one tighter too. Oh, I heard it. Chirp a little, thank you so much. Another five from Chirp a little. Chirp a little gets a burp because chirp. A chirper, 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 chirper. So we're gonna do another owl. This was the super fast owl that I did last week. So this is for you, Chirp a little. Thank you so much for your support. He's gonna sit right on top of Pickle the Kobold's head. <laughs> that looks funny. All right, thank you for your support. We're so close. Only, oh wait, it didn't update that, did it? Why didn't it update that? Two little burbs on, I didn't even see your thing before. I just knew, I just knew a burb had to happen, you know? Okay, we're gonna double knot that right there and fix this up a little bit. I don't know why that's not updating though, because I saw. Uh, hold on, we gotta go in here. We gotta fix this because it's not updating. Update it like that. There we go. Oh, it still didn't update. Oh, there it goes. Updated. Yeah, it's tracking it. 
I don't know. I don't know. I need to figure out how these things work. <laughs> okay. So we got our head for a face made. I oh, you know what? We should add the we should add the whiskers though before I continue. That one sure is fine. And I actually did something really fancy in the video tutorial for this where I go I'm going to cut it again. And actually, we, so we want three whiskers on each side. So I'm going to cut it one more time so we have six sides here. So now we have six strings. And what I did was I went and I made a slip knot in one of them like this. There we go. And then I put these other threads in the slip knot like that. Just like that. And then I have them halfway in and then I just pull the slip knot nice and tight and it should like keep all those threads together. And now I have three pieces, three threads, and I'll sew those through on the inside for each one. And now you can't pull it out at least it's a little bit more difficult to pull out than it was before. I don't know. I found it to be pretty helpful when I was making this originally. But now the trick is we need to figure out where we want to pull those whiskers out. One, two, okay. I see. Okay. So it's basically like all right at the cheek. Stop, help me. What do you need help with, Nora? Or no, Nior? How can I help you? Do you have a question? What? <laughs> when the burp entered, you found diamonds. I'm guessing, are you playing, are you playing Minecraft? Red doesn't want to doesn't want to play play fair. <gasps> you made it happen. You did it, Alberna. Wait, Alber yeah, Alberna, Alberna key. Thank you so much. A ten dollars support. You know what we're gonna bring out for that. Let's see, a ten dollars. You're we're gonna bring out a dragon. For a dragon for you. Because he's red. Perfect for the stream. Coming out soonish. I haven't worked on it in a few weeks because I have been trying to work on something else, which I'll show you guys in a halftime show. But thank you so much for your support, Alberna. This guy's going to go right. Right. We got. I mean, it's so big, though. So big. Oh, another one. Alvin. Alvin bumps it over even more. See, how do we get this dragon in here? Like this? You can go like that. You gotta tilt the head up like that. And then that'll go here. Wait. No, that'll we'll put we'll put this heart over here. <laughs> I always choose like the biggest things to put into the video. And then Alberna, thank you. Wait, no, wait, no. Alvin! Alvin, thank you. Alvin, we're gonna add God, I'm running out of red things. Oh, oh, I know. Well, another burb for you, Alvin. A cardinal. A cardinal for Alvin. Well, we made it. We hit our goal. Thank you guys so much. You made it happen. So next week, what we're going to do is there is going to be a game show. I'm very excited. It's going to be a big giveaway. If you want to keep donating, um, I will add your donations to the next bar. So here's, what, here's how it's going to work. Let me put this yarn away. Next week, I'm going to, I like, I have to film it ahead of time. But the halftime show, oh no, the purple burb. Yes, I saw it. I caught it. Here we go. There you go, Fandom Random. I saved him. Um, so, so next week we're gonna do that halftime show, uh, game show, and there's gonna be a new bar 
on a screen that's a little bit higher than 300. So it's going to keep going up and up and up. Um, and if you donate today, I will add your donation to that bar before it starts. So the new, the next goal is going to be, actually, I can just make it right now. Hold on. I'll, I'll, I think I can just do it real quick. Let's do this. Because there's no way we're going to hit a second goal in in this same live stream. So do that right there. Let's get this set up. Okay. So the end is now we're now we're reaching for 400. We have one dollar on the goal, and the end date is the beginning of April. So we got a long time. We got a new goal to go to April. For 400. We're not going to hit that, but we have a giveaway coming next week. How do I feel about pickled eggs? I don't think I've ever had a pickled egg, so I don't... My my thoughts are all based on opinions, and my opinion is that it sounds gross. <laughs> it sounds icky, but I don't know. I haven't tried it. I have tried a regular pickle, and I'm right to think that it's icky. I, the goal was for a game show. So next week we're going to do a an actual game show during the halftime show that everybody can enter to win a gift card to the shop. It's a special game. We'll have our halftime show in just a second after I finish this face. And uh, maybe, Jack, maybe Jack will make an appearance and he'll tell you more about it. The famous Jack Gurgle. Very famous. Everybody loves Jack. <laughs> At least he thinks so. All right. There we go. All my whiskers are in. And now we can just cut them somewhat close. So I go like, boop. I like them to still be long. Uh, maybe that's a little long. Especially this one. Put that one a little shorter. One, two, and three. Okay. Man, I wish I had that giveaway set up for this live stream so that I could just do it right now. I'm sorry I didn't set it up beforehand. I just didn't have time. But I am very sorry. I should have got it set up before. Okay. Halftime show. I should. I really need to have like a little video, a little like theme song and stuff for the halftime show. I should ask my friend to write me a song for that. All right, Jack. Jack. Yeah. What the? Were, were you taking a nap over there? All right. Um. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for all your support. My name is Jack Gurgle, and I am here to uh, to tell you thank you. So yeah, thanks. Yeah. Is that all you wanted? No, no. You gotta explain like what did they donate for? What are you going to like do now? You asked for all this money. What do you want? I just like money. Okay, you can't just like money. You gotta give something away. Okay, fine. Here's the plan. Okay, here's the plan. For donating all that money, what we're going to do is I have a giveaway. Yeah, that's right. Next live stream, during the halftime show, I'm going to come out, and I'm, we're going to do a big game show, and I got everything planned out, and the game we're going to be playing is called... Ready? It's called To Pay or Not To Pay. You can guess what it means, uh, and you'll see all about it next week. And basically, uh, you'll have a chance to win a gift card. Every one of you. Okay. Well, that's that. Uh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. If you want to help support this channel still, uh, we'll, we'll be doing a new bar. You can see it right there. And if you reach the next goal, then uh, we'll, uh, we'll do another one of those game shows. I got a few of them in mind. You already have them planned out? Yes, I do. Oh, oh! Someone said I should eat the otter. 
No, they said you shouldn't eat the otter. I think I want to eat the otter. Don't eat the otter. <laughs> Jack, give it. Give it. Let go. No. Thank you. It's covered in slobber now, dude. Thanks a lot. You're very welcome. <laughs> Jack, you're ridiculous, dude. Okay, well, thanks for that, Jack. He'll be back next week. In the meantime, while we're waiting for Jack, let me show you all the cool things that I've been making in the time between our last live stream and now. Because I've got some really cool stuff that's coming out very soon on the channel. So here are some previews of it. First is, well, you kind of got a little bit of a preview of it because it's been on screen the entire time right here. Here, you can see him. See? Wait, 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 wait. There. See that? See this little guy? This is the newest creation that I'm working on. <laughs> it was rude, Jack. People are saying you're rude. I'm not rude. You are rude. Is It's a little macaw. Look at how cute. I did all these little cool color changes in the wings and stuff. So it's a macaw version of the burb. Um, I was thinking of doing a few different new burbs for to thank you guys for the um, all the support uh, and all the likes in the last live stream. So I know I said I was going to do just one, but I think I'm going to do two. And I think one of them is going to be free and then one of them is not going to be free. I don't know totally yet, but I'm thinking macaw is going to be one of them because I think it just looks so cool. And it's in actually not that tough. I made sure to, to design it in a way that was still like doable. So yes, this is one thing that I have been making in the past few weeks. Obviously he's a burb, put him to the side. So that's the first thing. And it's very, it's very similar to my um, cockatoo from last week. So you can see how, see the tail is definitely like very similar and then the beak as well. So I, I wanna do a pattern for both of these guys soon, but I'm also thinking about a hummingbird for the burb uh, to thank you guys for all the likes. This is what the hummingbird looks like. This is not new, but just to give you an idea of what the hummingbird looks like. Uh, before I show you the other stuff I've been working on, Jane, thank you for your support. Jane supported, nom, 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 I love it. Five, five whole buckaroos. I love it, thank you so much. Oh, oh, here we go. Jane, for you, something else that's red because I'm running out of red things to put in the background here is <laughs> the Dark Lord himself, Mr. Gannon. Gannon. That's for you, Jane. Thank you for your support. I thought Gannon would be a good one. What do you think? I like him. I'm going to, sometime this year, I'm going to redo a bunch of Zelda patterns including this Ganon one. Not redo them, but like make it a little bit easier with the color changes chart and stuff like that. Okay, so these are the, these are two of the new things that I've made this month or this past few weeks. The other stuff is I'm planning for next month because next month uh, I need to start planning the kits a little bit earlier in advance. And so next month's kit, let me show you, let me show you what the rough draft is. Now, if you've been following on my Instagram, uh, I did do put this on a story it's kind of hard to turn on because it is the rough draft and I did it all wrong because I'm a doofus. Um, I think I need this. One second. Because I put the switch on the inside. I shouldn't have, but I did. There we go. Yeah. So here is the rough draft and it's gotten kind of like wibbly wobbly in the time that I've... Actually, I might need to show you right here. So the idea is it's a night light. You can't really see, but it's on because the lights are just so bright right now. Let me just do this. I'll do this real quick. See that? So it's a night light and it looks like a rocket shooting up with all the with all that smoke. Now this, the smoke right now is not staying together because I didn't like glue it in yet. But um, this is going to be the idea for next month's kit is we're gonna do a rocket and you can make it make your little rocket bit however you want. Um, I'm doing a tutorial for both of them. Here is that, so that was the old rough draft. There's a button as the 
as the window, it just fell. But I tried doing a few different versions of it because I wanna make it a little easier. So we're gonna do, um, this is a better version of the rocket. And here's another one. So I'm gonna make it so you can customize it with little, your own windows, however you want your windows to be. So we're gonna do a space rocket that you can, uh, that comes with a little light and all the stuffing and wire. So you can make it, uh, make your own light up rocket. And you can, uh, you can make it so it's a stand, like a night light, or you can put it so that it's got like a long string of lights. So you can put it on the wall, you know, or you can make it a big circle on your fan or something like that. There's like a lot of different options, a lot of different ways you can, you can mess with the pattern. So that is the idea for next month's kit. If you would like to sign up for a pro membership, now is your chance. Um, your last time to stand, sign up is going to be at the end of the month. And it's gonna come with the little lights, the little wire, everything. So it's it's gonna be a pretty cool kit. I'm, I'm actually, I think this one's gonna be one of the best ones. I'm very, very excited about it. So yeah, these are the other two little rockets. And what I've been also trying to do is make a miniature version of, these rock, of this rocket as well. So that like I have options for other people, you know, to like, I don't know. Really the reason is because I really wanted to design one that was really tiny. So this is the itty bitty rocket that I made. Look at how tiny it is. It's so tiny. It's so tiny. It's actually really easy to make. You have to sew on these, all these little fins, but, um, but everything else is made in just one piece. So I'm thinking uh, I'll do a little miniature rocket and a big rocket so you guys can make one in different sizes if you want. Um, and this one can be sized up with bigger yarn too. I mean, they both can be, but this one can be like pretty big. I think you can make like a pretty decently sized rocket with this. Um, yeah, so this is what I'm kind of planning on for next month. I'm really, really proud of these patterns. Uh, I think they're gonna be really cool. So if you'd like to sign up for pro membership, now is your chance. Um, and then with these rockets, I couldn't help myself. You guys have seen the little miniature UFO that I made a few weeks ago with the glow in the dark yarn, but I've been kind of trying to do that a little bit more. So um, this is the, I here's a little miniature UFO to go with your little miniature rocket. So I'm working on a little mini UFO pattern. It's very tiny, obviously, like look at that, it's so tiny. Really quick to make, I think I made this in like 15 minutes. So that's what's really nice about these little miniature patterns they're quick to make but there's not as much detail as the bigger ones and then also i decided i'll make a big rocket or big ufo too now this one you can see is a little floppy right now and that's because it's uh, it's still um empty but you can open it up and the idea here is i'm going to do a little alien that you can put inside of it so he can be in his little ship so this is a very rough draft. This is just the first one I made, but I'm gonna do a few different versions of it of, and try it out a few different times before I do a complete finished version. Uh, and I mean, like, look at all the things already. Look at this. This is a lot of things that I've made the past few weeks, plus the little light up one. Um, but the other one is, uh, is I've been working on some alien designs. So this is kind of worked off of the, um, off of the brain sucker from uh, Futurama. So it's kind of like that kind of idea there. I want to make it a, a little smaller so it fits into this little rock, uh, this little UFO though. But yeah, we're going to be very space themed next month, including like um, a bunch of miniature stars, which I don't have to show you because I put them away because I'm a doofus. Well, there are little miniature stars that I'm working on too. So a lot of stuff coming soon. Um, someone asked, uh, is that a pink dinosaur? Yes, this is a little pink dinosaur right here in the background, a little triceratops. And then someone else, Fandom Random, asked, uh, can you purchase the kit? Let's see, wait, someone asked that. I could have sworn someone asked if you could purchase it afterwards. Oh, yeah. Can you buy the kit after the deadline? Yeah, so... Um, just like how I did this uh, otter pattern, um, I made a bunch of kits for for the monthly kits in preparation for people to purchase or to that signed up for the monthly kits. Well, I always make a little bit more than than was than the signups just in case a lot of people sign up at the last minute, and uh, if they don't, then I have them for sale afterwards. So 
this otter, like I have like a few of them left over from the kits, which is why they're available in the shop. And I'll do the same thing with this rocket kit as well. So it'll be able to purchase afterwards. What's really nice about all the kits on the website is if you purchase a kit, um, or if you have a membership to the website, you get a discount on kits. So you actually get $5 off of a lot of the kits on the website if you have a membership, which is nice. So uh, if you wanted to purchase an additional um, uh, otter kit, it's only $15 if you have a membership. So it's kind of cool. Okay, well, that's all the cool things that I have been making in the past few weeks, and I know there's a lot, so it's kind of cool. Kind of neat, kind of neat. Let's see, where are we going to put all these? I'll put them right here. If you support, maybe I'll add them to the background for you. And then I think Phantom Random said something about him naming the, uh, his, once I come out with a Jack Gurgle pattern, which I will, I'll come out with a pattern for that eventually. He wants to name it Gak Jurgle. <laughs> Gak Jurgle. Isn't that great? What? T Savvy says, what about a happy eagle bird? Well, here's an eagle, but he's not, he looks a little grumpy, but there is an eagle that I've been working on. What I really like about these, um, let me just talk about this one a little bit more. What I really like about the, uh, the macaw is that the beak is really cool to make because it's actually a bobble stitch under. So this black one is a bobble stitch. And then I made a beak that gets sewn on over the bobble stitch so that it's a top beak and a bottom beak. Isn't that cool? I don't know. I thought it was pretty like a neat way to do it to make the pattern like somewhat simple to make. I'm pretty happy with it. Okay, let's keep rocking and rolling, hooking and booking. Hooking and cooking. Drinking some coffee. Yes, a cockatiel burb. Yeah, I th I, that's now that I have that new beak pattern, it should be a lot easier to make a cockatiel too. Especially with those cute little red cheeks. Cockatiels are crazy cute. Like they should be, it feels like they're they're like man-made or something, you know? So that's the end of the round. And this is the first stitch. Right there. Thank you. That's a clever big thank you very much. Yes, I feel, um, I, I have to say, I did feel clever when I was making that pattern. This sounds like a Kirby song to me. Yeah. <laughs> cockatiels are so cute. They seem annoying though. Are they annoying, Jamie? How, is your cockatiel annoy you ever? But they do seem so sweet and and kind and fun. I like I like watching videos of cockatiels playing peekaboo. Peekaboo. So now we're making the body of our of our otter. And this is the thing that I really like about this otter is that it's all made in well, almost all made in one piece except for the arms that you have to sew on. But a lot of it is just made. Boop, 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 in one piece, all together. Whoa, Fifu TV says they have six cockatiel. Co six of them. That's so many cockatiels. That's crazy, dude. Wow. Hey, guys, thanks again for watching, by the way. If you can, uh, please like this video down below. Helps it spread out to more people. I mean, we have a lot of likes, 150 likes already. That's That's pretty good. That is pretty good. So thank you so much to everybody that has already liked this video too. Fifu says, never annoying. The cockatiels are never annoying. They're the sweetest birds they've ever had. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. Well, may maybe I'll have to do a burb cockatiel next uh, for to show off in the halftime show next week. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it, right? 16. Yeah, okay. Those two 
going around. Boom. Covered, baby. Okay, now it's just four rounds of single crochets. That's easy. That's easy. Let's talk with you guys for a little bit. Nona says she's only got fishies. Only got fishies. What kind of fishies you got? You got salt water or fresh water? Goldfish? When I was younger, um, we used to have a pond in the backyard. My dad built a, it was like a really cool pond with a waterfall and everything. And had a little bridge on it and stuff. It was really cool. And we had, uh, we had these, um, uh, carp, uh, not carp, uh, well, yeah, koi. We had koi fish in it. And you could stick your toes in the, in the water and they'd nibble at your toes. It was really cute, actually. I, I like, I like koi fish. They're very nice to look at. Bobby's got some miniature snowsers. Yeah, I think, um, I think I got to make cocktail burb for next week. 20 angel fish. That does sound mesmerizing. Mesmerizing is a very fun word to say. Mesmerizing. Oh, Chantel. Chantel says, can you create a baby otter go to go on his belly? Oh, that's a really cute idea, actually. Dang, I should do that. That's a really fun idea. Might be tough, but I think I could. I mean, I think I could. I think I can. I think I can. Divine Rose, I also have two kitties. We both have two kitties. What are your kitties' names? My kitties' names are, are Jiminy. Jiminy Cricket. We call him Jimbo. And uh, Phoebe. And we we call him, uh, we can call him PB and J. Because Phoebe, PB, PB and J. I love them. Phoebe is the cutest thing ever. She does this thing where you can scratch her belly when she's laying on you. She always lays on your lap. She loves laying on uh, on straightened out legs. I think it's because of the heat of your legs. And then if you start to scratch your belly, she'll like roll over on your lap and she'll be like, yes, I love you. It's so cute. So cute. <laughs> Aquatic Luna has uh, a mob of cats that come to her backyard. That's funny. Gizmo and Fluffy. Oh, Gizmo, what a name for a cat. I love that. Gizmo. That is such a cute name. Okay, where are we at here? We're at, uh, okay, so I gotta do six. One. Five and six, and then I do an increase right here. Right? Is that right? Is that right, Pass Lou? Yes, it is. Oh no, we lost one of the things. Okay, we gotta fix that. Hold on. I think we can use this actually. I see it. See it? It's right there. The littlest yarn. There we go. Just need to be delicate here. Even everything out. There we go. All fixed. Bye, Jamie. Thank you for joining. I'll see you next Sunday. Lotus asks, is there a pattern for that dragon? Not yet. It is coming uh, probably in the summer. We will have a pattern for that dragon. But yes, I, I still got a little bit more work to do. 
It's a big, crazy big pattern. 54. Yeah, it's gonna be a pattern and a kit in uh, in the summer, I think. But what's what's really hard to explain is the the wings have this very weird way to make them that is so cool, but it is um it's a little tricky. So I gotta I gotta work on the best way to explain it soon. Is that right? Five. Yeah, I guess so. And then a decrease. Huh. Interesting. Sometimes I do stitches and I'm like, really? Is that what you wanted to do, Pass Lou? Okay, now what I would like about this, uh, one thing I did in this pattern that I haven't done before is um, I do a leg in the stitch above. So it's actually a bobble stitch, but it's in a stitch above instead of the current round so it kind of makes it look a little bit bigger and it's it was actually that's that's my idea for the cat pattern that I was working on lit uh, earlier this week was doing a bobble stitch in the round above for the back legs to make it a little bit longer I don't know I'm gonna try it out I don't know if that makes any sense right now but I do have an idea for something See, because like, imagine if this was like the bottom of a body and I did the bobble stitch up like that and I did another bobble stitch, but not in the round above, then it looked like those legs were longer and then the front legs, I don't know. It, it's cool. I, I think it'll, I think it'll work out the way I want it to, but we'll see how to go. How, roughly how long did it take to make that dragon? Probably like, I mean, this dragon probably took like six or seven hours because it was the first one I made. And so like, there's a lot of different parts for it. Um, also, it's not great because the back legs are bobble stitches, and I think I should instead make back legs that you sew on because it's just a little, it's just a little weird, like these little tiny bitty back legs. So it's gonna take a little bit longer when I redo it. I want to try redoing it in green. One, two. Oh, you're so totally right, Jane. Jane, wow, good, good looking out. Jane says you've totally done that before with the T-Rex and you were totally right. I did do that with the T-Rex. Yeah, I totally forgot. <laughs> you're right though. I am wrong. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Wait, that can't be right. On this side. Uh, da, yes, the dragon is definitely a favorite. I really need to put more work into that pattern. Once I finish, um, yeah, I just need to get ahead of patterns right now. I have plans for. For April, um, we're gonna try to do a bunch of pattern collaborations with uh, with other folks. So maybe once I finish up those uh, designs, I can start putting more effort into that dragon pattern. But man, there's so many, there's so many patterns. I kind of want to time it out because I'm doing a. Um, me and my friend are planning a Kickstarter for Stitched um, this, hopefully this summer. So I'm kind of trying to plan it around that, the new dragon pattern, as like a, you know, incentive for the Kickstarter. But we'll see how it goes. So we've got little legs. Am I making a pattern for fingerless gloves or other winter items? I think we're a little, I'm a little late, um, but next year, next year I should do that. Bye, Callie. Next year, I should definitely do a fingerless gloves pattern, especially because it's like, it's a really good pattern for uh, beginners to get an idea of how to crochet. So one, two, three, wait, right? No, one, two. Oh, Elizabeth's back. 
They gotta go, never mind. Five, six. Oh, really? Wow, interesting. Sometimes I look at my old pattern, my writing, I'm like, oh, oh maybe I didn't know you were going to do that. I didn't know you were going to pull one of those. Past Lou. So long. Crochet and craft with Linus. Thanks for joining. One. Yeah, that's right. That's what's supposed to happen. All right. Now, before I continue, I'm going to sew on the arms now because I think it's going to be a little easier to do it now. So we're going to go over here, right there. That music sounds super quiet. I don't even think you can hear it. You can't. I'm turning it up a little bit. Yeah, that's better, right? You can hear it now, right? Yarn and Needles PH says they love crocheting, but they hate doing amigurumi. You haven't made the right amigurumi then, because I think amigurumi is the best thing to crochet because it's quick, it's easy, it's you one and done. Um, you should you should consider checking out my Triceratops pattern or the piglet one maybe or the, um, the crocheted heart, because they're really quick and easy patterns, which I think are really nice for um, people to get introduced to the art of amigurumi and how great it is. Especially because I really like making games with all my, oh, I forgot to tell you about the new game I thought of last night. I need to buy the materials for it, but I got an idea for a game. See, last live stream, well, actually, two live streams ago, but also last live stream, we were messing around a bunch with the chickens. Because, um, one second, I'll show you them in just a sec. I just need to make sure this is wound around in the right way. It's, it's, getting, it's, it's being tricky on me. Okay, so last time we have uh, we made a chicken that could like poop an egg out. Well, I guess they're not they're not pooping an egg, even though it, I don't know. I guess it, yeah, they're not pooping the egg, but they're hatching an egg. They're laying an egg, so you can lay an egg, but you can lay it at a quick velocity, so you can actually shoot it out. So I was thinking, what would be kind of cool is for Easter to do. Um, and this might not be like the monthly kit, but to add a new kit to the shop for those chickens where it comes with wooden eggs and a little basket and make a new game that is uh, something about like all your eggs in, a bas in one basket or something like that. And you have to shoot your eggs and make them land inside of the basket from like across the room or something. Like a little tiny, little crochet, or little, not crochet, but a little tiny basket. That's the idea. Let me show you that chicken. Let me just double knot these and cut it. And I'll show you the chicken before I sew on the other arm. Okay. Cut that yarn, put it down the side. Just check this out. See? This is a chicken. This is burp. Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> Here's a chicken, and there's a little egg on the bottom there, and you can actually shoot it out by by squishing him, and he, boop. Oh, I hit you right in the face, Ganon. I'm not even sorry, you're a jerk. <laughs> but yeah, you can shoot it out. Here, you can see it on the, in the regular camera. You can kind of see how high it goes, ready? I won't be able to find it after I do this, so. Oh! That made it all the way to the other side of the room. That was crazy. Okay, but you get the idea. Uh, uh, like little eggs that you can shoot out. So if I had a little tiny basket on the other side of the, um, like 
like a table and you try to shoot it into your little basket. I don't know how difficult it would be though, so I need to buy some basket and, and stuff and try it up, try some different ideas out. Um, but that would be the idea. I think it'd be pretty fun. Um, but the, someone asked, can you do it with crocheted eggs? And I mean, you can, it's just a little bit more difficult because the, uh, you need something a little like slippy, slipperier than yarn because yarn is, you know, not very slippery. So it can be a little difficult to do it without, without a, like a wooden egg, something, something slippery. Something slippery. Something slippery. I had a, um, a puppet in elementary school. I can't remember what his name was. But it was my first puppet. Uh, my dad bought it for me and I had a, I was in like a puppet, like, after school class because I was a nerd and that's just the way I I do uh, and <laughs> um, the puppet the puppet would talk like this he had a very silly voice where he would talk like this it's kind of gross actually <laughs> but yeah I just thought about that uh, a little memory unhand me sir That? All your eggs. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Because the the in your in your basket is is implied. So it'll just be called all your eggs. That's good. I like that. Yeah, I need to find wooden eggs first that are that are like, you know. Cheap. I can find if I can find some like wooden eggs for on wholesale online somewhere, a little bit cheaper than I could offer them in the kits. But I'm thinking like three eggs per per uh, team. So you'd so it'd be six eggs total in the kit, and it'd be enough to make two chickens. It'd have two baskets and then six eggs. That's what I'm thinking about for the kit. Let me know what you think, if you have any other ideas. More people should watch this. I agree, Yarn and Needles. Hey, if you agree with Yarn and Needles and you also think that more people should watch this, make sure to like this video down below. That way other people get notified about it. And let your, um, let people know. Like if you have a little crochet community online somewhere if you're on a discord channel that's outside of the club crochet group or or you have one uh, like you want to post it on reddit or something please let other people know about this live stream it's you know i think it's fun i think it's a lot of fun and it's even more fun when more people join so it could be kind of a cool cool thing if you want to let other people know about this live stream as well so we're gonna add i'm gonna start stuffing our head up and i'm gonna start um I want to add all this extra thread because, like, it's a great way to use your wasted yarn and stuff. Or, or not yarn. Um, extra ed ends and stuff. Um, yes, a seamless stitch. Okay, so Divine Rose asks, this might be a dumb question, but is there a video for a seamless stitch? So I do have something... I have a few different videos that might work out for you. It depends what you need a seamless stitch for. Um, but we have the perfect stripe method. That's great for for how to make stripes very seamless so you don't see where the edge of the, of the stripe is. Um, that one's pretty useful. You can find that by just going to clubcrochet.com slash stripe. And then I also have something I call the seamless seam, which sounds kind of funny, but it is pretty cool. Uh, and basically what it does is it's a, it's a way to make like a snowman. So so basically how it works is it's a, it makes it look like these are sewn together. See, because it, look, it looks like these are two heads sewn together, right? But they're not. Um, it's actually a stitch that you do and you work in a specific way. And you can find that by just going to clubcrochet.com slash, I think, seamless. Um, if you can't find it there, you can find it on my YouTube channel by just searching on my YouTube channel. 
that should work too. Uh, I'm gonna save this to stuff it in after a few rounds because I don't want it to get in the way as I'm crocheting. Oh, for attaching amigurumi limbs. Um, oh, I don't know. I don't know how, hmm. Oh, you hear that? Oh my gosh, I'm so bippity poppity. Let's see if my hands will do it, ready? Good stuff, good stuff. Sound like popcorn. I'm popcorn boy. Okay, where are we at? What round are we at? I gotta start using the check marks. I, I, I always forget that I have that really cool like feature on the website and on the PDF patterns, there's check marks so you can keep track of your progress. And it's so useful. <laughs> it really is. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I think um, one of the reasons why I'm so like actively making patterns and tutorials and stuff is so that I can actually remember for myself later on. Um, and it's the same reason why I do things like check marks. It's I do it, you know, I do make them for other people so that you guys can make your crochet patterns a little bit easier. Um, but I also do it for myself because I use my patterns every single day because I don't, I have some patterns memorized, but not all of my patterns. I mean, there's just too many. I've like got hundreds of patterns on the website now. So <laughs> I, I, I write them down so that I have my own memory of them. So that one day when I'm an old man in a in a um, assisted living home, I could still crochet all my patterns. <laughs> no, here's the real here's the real thing. When I'm an old folks' home, which I would love, I don't know why we have so much problem putting people into old folks homes because that seems like the most fun ever. I would love, it sounds like a summer camp like all the time, except also you're old. <laughs> you can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't jump off the high dive anymore. But I'm gonna be playing so much Super Smash Brothers and uh, watching a bunch of like old, like my old TV is gonna be like all the old Marvel movies. <laughs> That, that actually sounds like a great time. Okay, so we're coming to the end of this pattern actually. And then we gotta make our little hearts. I wonder what color we should make our heart in. Do you think like a pink or a red? We do hot pink, regular soft pink like this guy. So we can either do like a hot pink like this cobalt here or a soft pink like the dinosaur, or we can do a red like um, Ganondorf's hair here. What do you think would be best for our, or we could do like a purple. Oh, we should do a purple actually, because that's Jules' favorite color. We'll do purple for her. Okay, so you just stuff it up with this thread, it uses that extra thread. And then something else that I always like to do in this, and actually the kit comes with these, The kit comes with three nickels. I'm only gonna use two because I don't know where the third one is. But yeah, there's there's a third nickel somewhere here because I had it ready. Um, but the kit actually comes with three nickels. And the reason is because uh, I like to add nickels in the back of the character, just in the back of them. And it helps them sit up straight a little bit easier. It's not like a necessity, but it is nice. And so I added it into the kit because if I use it, you know, it should probably be in the kit for other people to use too. Ooh, a rainbow. Yeah, we could try doing a rainbow. We could probably try doing a rainbow. You mean a rainbow um, heart, right? Unicorn. Yes, uh, Ziva, it is a dragon in the back right here. It is. Check him out. Pretty cool, huh? Pattern's still being worked on, but it's coming out eventually.
Have I ever crocheted a unicorn? Yes, that's actually one of the first patterns on the website is a unicorn pattern. Um, I think it, you can probably just find it by going to clubcrochet.com slash unicorn. Um, but yes, there is. It's a miniature unicorn, so I probably need to do a new one. But it's it's a good pattern. It was one of the first patterns that came out, came out with on clubcrochet.com. Because when I started the website, I started with like 15 patterns, I think, of my own that were available with the membership. And one of them was for the unicorn. There's also like a David Bowie in the early stuff. He's very tiny. He's like this big of a unicorn. The dragon pattern is not for sale yet. Uh, it will be coming out in the summer. So it, it'll, it'll be out sooner or later, for sure. Just keep an eye out. I will I will definitely be sure to let you know. One, two, three. Four. That feels wrong. Wait, hold on. Really? Okay. All right. I believe you. Okay. I believe you. One. Two. Yeah, Jules is obsessed with rainbows, so I think a rainbow heart is a great idea. I'll go grab the rainbow yarn after this. I actually have some yarn that's perfect to try out for this. Yeah. Then what's after this round? Oh, oh, okay. It starts with the invisible degrees, and I already did it. Oh, then we single crochet seven. All right. Okay, so Amber Divine says, so they've made like four of my amazing patterns. Thank you so much, Amber. Most proud of the piggies, yeah. I think, oh, oh, I forgot to let you guys know. Yes, there is a rainbow yarn and I'll show you it in just a sec. I forgot to let you know um, that, uh, oh, the pig, uh, uh, so remember that UFO? I got another cool idea for a game. So, with these UFOs in mind, but what I'm thinking is, and watch, I'll probably make it by next week, is I'm thinking a little crocheted cow, because, you know, we have pigs, we got, uh, we got chickens, maybe we'll start doing farm animals soon. And what I'm thinking is, if I make a little cow with a little magnet at the top of the cow, like, you know, like, let's pretend this is the cow, and there's a magnet right at the top there, and then I take a, a piece of yarn, and it goes straight through... And I have this attached to a stick, you know, like, like that. Let's see, wait, actually, I'm just gonna do it right now. So we just have this, like, well, maybe I won't do it anymore. Yes, I will. Yes, I will, because I've got ants in my pants and I want to. So I've got my, I got this cat toy that's just basically a long stick with a string attached to it. And so I'm thinking if we do like this, and we go into the top of the UFO. And I'm just this is just gonna be a quick little idea here. And then I have a secondary, pretend this is a different color yarn here coming out from the bottom. But see, so it's like attached on a string like that. Little UFO attached on a string, right? There we go. Okay. And then the bottom string, this bottom one, we do a green string coming out from the bottom with a magnet that's crocheted around a magnet attached to the bottom of the string. So it looks like a little green string coming out the bottom of it. And then this magnet on the bottom 
can attach to the cow magnet and then you can do a game where you have to go and you have to pick up a cow and you have to bring it over to like a little place and you have to drop it off. Isn't that a great idea? I, I'm just, I've just been so addicted to making uh, different ideas for different games using these crochet pieces. I just think it's a fun way to use your, use Amigurumi. Quinn's ask, is the Audrey pattern free? It is not free. It, um, it is available with a membership or it's only two ninety nine. dollars um, So if you want to buy it, it's only two ninety nine, dollars and obviously it helps support this channel and myself. It's the best way to support it. Now the miniature heart pattern that we're about to make after I finish this is free, and you can find that at clubcrochet.com slash heart. But the Audrey pattern is available with a membership, and you can get a free trial for the membership. So you get that too. Yes, exactly, Phantom Random, or you can hang it up in your room. I just think I just think it'd be really fun. More games, more crocheted games. Okay, so where are we at here on this pattern? We are at right there. So we need a single crochet two and then invisible decrease. Do it again. Just about done here. Kitty uh, asks if I'm able to ship to the UK, and yes, I absolutely can. Uh, you can get pro memberships to the UK, or you can, sh yeah. The answer is yes, we can ship to the UK. Anything on the website. But <laughs> Jane says, but let us play the dino game first. You're right, um, I'm reaching out to my friend I have almost all the pieces made for the dinosaur game. Uh, I just, we have a few things that we need to finish the designs for before I do the, um, before I like release it out to the wild. But basically what we're doing is um, the dino game uses cards that you need to, uh, you need to print out. So I'm getting, I, I'm, I'm actually paying a lot of money for this. Um, my friend is illustrating them all. So I'm commissioning him. That's this is what I use these donations for is to commission friends to like make art. It's the same artist that does um, that did the stickers. Uh, his name is my friend named Dom. He goes by Pen and Drink on Instagram if you want to check him out. But he's designing uh, the cards for the game and the board for it. And so what I want to do before I do the play test is I want people to have the option so that they can actually print out the game when they test the game out and then I'm gonna ask for everybody's advice like what do you think about this like what if I changed the amount of cards you have you know if you have more explosions or if you have more rocks or something how how does it change the game and what works best Oh man, Charlie, I feel that 100%. So Charlie says, how do you find the motivation to get those orders done? I am really struggling to find motivation right now. I'll tell you what, dude. Charlie, I I know on this video, I know in these live streams, I sound like I'm always motivated to do so much stuff. I am not. I deal with, I definitely deal with anxiety and I definitely deal with depression very, very often. Sundays is a completely different thing because I am an extrovert, so I gain a lot of my energy from other people. So going to this chat, I get a lot of energy. I get a lot of motivation just from being able to hang out with you guys, reading the chat, just, just hanging out in general. But my days in the week are low. Well, not every day, but at least one or two days of the week, I am very unmotivated. I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to wake up. Uh, and so I, I feel that I feel being unmotivated very often. And it's really hard sometimes for me to get out of that. One thing that is really, really helpful is support like you guys support talk, hearing what you guys have to say, have having requests continuously coming through. Um, that's really, really motivating, especially the fact that I love to crochet and that I don't 
I'm not able to crochet all the time because I do have a day job. Uh, that does help with the motivation. When you're not able to do something too very often, sometimes that can make things more motivating. But to your question of how do you get motivated, I don't know. It it depends. Uh, sometimes it's rewarding myself. If I do some work, maybe I'll get some video game time. That that helps keep me motivated. Um, sometimes what I do to get motivated when I need absolutely need to do something, like if I need to make a video for, um, like I also do freelance work, so. Um, like companies will come to me and they'll be like, hey, I'd love to get a video made for my, um, for a call that I'm doing or whatever, for like a stupid corporate thing. doesn't matter. But I hate doing them. They're super duper unmotivating. So what I sometimes do is I will do this thing where I'll close my eyes uh, and I'll count to 10. And when I get to 10, I open my eyes and I pretend that I'm a person that is super duper motivated. I just pretend, I just fake it. Um, and I just go like, it's it's also how, I don't take shots of, of alcohol anymore, but when I used to be young, when I was 21, and I would do shots of alcohol, is I did the exact same thing. I counted down from 10, and when I opened my eyes, I pretended that I was a person that really liked taking shots. <laughs> I just faked it. And I open my eyes and I go, okay, wow, I'm someone now that I love taking shots and I'll take the shot and it's no big deal. And then I let that, that fake person go. After I'm done doing the thing that I didn't want to do, then I can be myself again. Because sometimes, even though you don't have the motiva motivation to do something, you have to do it. You have to do your homework. And it sucks. You don't want to do your homework. But you got to do it anyhow. So sometimes it's just... Count count down from 10 and pretend you're someone that really wants to do something that you need to do. <laughs> Might not work for you, but it works for me. Another trick that I've done, well, let me grab this heart. Let me grab this rainbow color real quick. I'll be right back. It's right here, so I'm not going very far. And I don't know if this rainbow yarn is going to work out. Well, we'll try it. Where's my clip? Okay, I grabbed, I grabbed purple and rainbow just in case. If the rainbow doesn't work out, I have the purple yarn as a backup. But we'll try the rainbow yarn first. Um, another trick that I use for motivation is like if I'm on the couch or I, I'm in bed. Um, being in bed and unmotivated, is th that's the hardest time for me to get out of bed. Especially early in the morning because I'm not a morning person. So if I'm like, I have a meeting at like 7 a.m. on every other Tuesday. I hate these meetings. It's the worst meeting in the world. Um, they're just super boring and I hate going to them. So if it's like 6.55 and I, my alarm goes off and I'm like, I don't want, I, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm angry. I'm like unmotivated and upset that I even have to get up right now to do this stupid meeting that I hate to do. So what I do, <laughs> it's so funny. What I do is I'll start by, um, I wiggle my toes. I start by wiggling my toes because that's easy. I can definitely wiggle my toes. And then once I wiggle my toes, I'm like, okay, I have control of my feet. I'm gonna wiggle my feet. Okay, now I'm gonna move my feet a little bit. Now I'm gonna pull my feet over the bed because I know I can do that. Now that I wiggle my toes, now I can move my feet over the bed. And then once my feet are over the bed, okay, well now I've gotta get up. It's like. Just the littlest things that I do that make me realize it's easier to take little steps to get somewhere than take the big step to get to just go straight from laying down to getting up. Sometimes I just can't do it. I just can't. So instead I'll do like little wiggles to get myself to the point where I can get up. I know that was a lot. I'm sorry. But uh, I hope that helps. It helps me. I hope it helps you. If it doesn't, if you have another way to get motivated in the chat, let me know. I'd love more ways to get motivated. That is something that I desperately need. So any advice would be great. But let's try to make this heart. So here's what I'm a little worried about with this yarn. 
is I'm afraid that it doesn't change color fast enough. So we're gonna try it. What I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to make a really big heart. Um, but yeah. Ziva, will I, will I answer DMs on Instagram? I try to, I try my best, but I get a lot. Of, I don't use DMs. I don't use Instagram that much. Um, so yeah, I don't often see things there, but I will try to look into my Instagram DMs more often, especially um, on Club Crochet. The Louis Loops Instagram DMs, I I have I just haven't been using my Louis Loops Instagram very often, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but wait, three, yeah, because we want to get bigger. I'm gonna try to even go bigger than this. We're gonna see what happens. I haven't made one bigger than this yet, but we're gonna see. One, two, three, four. Like a double, double one. Because we need our heart to be big so we can get all the colors in it. Oh, oh boy. I don't know if this is gonna work out. And then one, two, three. Oh no, we gotta do more, four. Four good? Four might work. And then we'll slip stitch. Look at that. Oh, Ziva. Yeah, the best way to share... Okay, so if you want to share things with me, um, share things that you've made with me, the best way is either post a picture on Instagram with hashtag club crochet because I see those. Those pop up on my feed like all the time. Or go to the Discord channel. Um, there's a link in the description below or you can just go to clubcrochet.com slash Discord. And there's a section in the discord channel called look at what I made uh, and I go into there every day and I look at what other people make I think that's a great way uh, and then the last way you can uh, the last thing you can do to share things that you've made with me is by going to um, there's a Facebook group we have a Facebook group that you can share things with too so there's three different ways you can share one two three four five we're gonna do that Chrissy, what size hook is this? This is, I'm using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. That's my favorite size crochet hook to use. Um, yeah. I also sometimes like using the, an E, which is slightly smaller. Four, I think that was right. Or one, two, three. Get into blue now. Good, we are going to do. That's what I want. I wanted to at least get to blue. And then a triple. God, this thing is huge. This, this is, it's kind of confusing doing this many stitches. Hopefully, this works out. Maybe we'll make a purple one too, just in case. And we'll pull it all tight. Flatten everything a bit. Hey, you know, that's rainbow. There's a rainbow heart. For sure. Okay, now next we want to chain two. One, two, pull it nice and tight, and slip stitch. Love how easy these hearts are to make though. Right. Can we cut the yarn? Um can I can I see your post if it's private? No, I don't think I can. I don't think I could see your stuff uh, if you're private. That's why I think maybe going on to the um, Discord channel uh, might be your best option there. Yo, I saw Jasmine. I saw your jumbo Triceratops in the Discord. Uh, um, that was like a few days ago though, right? I think I don't think you posted that yesterday. Maybe you did. I don't know. I don't think I went onto the Discord yesterday, but maybe did. Uh, but I saw a jumbo, the jumbo Triceratops, and it is so cool. It's huge. It's like really, really big, and and there's like little ones too, so you can see like the the size difference. You guys should check it out. It's in the Discord channel, and it's very, very, very cool. Check out Jasmine's giant Triceratops. It's very impressive. It makes me want to do that. Am I still going to make an owl tutorial? Yes, um, it's already out, actually, Dominic. Uh, Dominique. Um, you can find it by just going to clubcrochet.com slash owl. 
Uh, it's this little owl right here. This this one uh, is out now at clubcrochet.com slash owl. Or you can find it by just going to clubcrochet.com slash burb. That's where you can find all the burbs. This looks pretty good, guys. I think this rainbow really worked out, actually. Hi, Elizabeth. Elizabeth is back. Hello. Hello. Okay, next we'll hide this end. And then I'll make a little purple one too for fun. Actually, maybe we'll make even a mini, 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 mini purple one. Let's try that. One, two, three. Just hide this end in a few stitches there. Hold tight. It's funny that only one stitch ended up yellow there. Yeah, jumbo crocheted animals are really cool, Hannah. I think that's um, something I really want to start getting into more is making my my stuff big, big. That's a pretty good rainbow heart. We're going to go ahead and do that. Just going to hold on to that heart. I mean, we technically, we're done. But I want to make some miniature hearts first. Right? Isn't that cool? Okay. Uh, Jeslyn, oh, this is back, and thankfully it's not pickles. <laughs> well, our otter is finished. Our heart is finished. Now, the only thing I want to do, because I don't want to leave just yet, because I like you guys, is we're going to try to make some itty-bitty hearts using this embroidery thread instead. Embroidery thread instead. Let's see what we can do here. hard is this embroidery thread always gets tangled for me every time I, I'm just so bad at m making it not get tangled you know I, I honestly I'm I'm making it more tangled right now it's it, oh my god I'm making it so much worse <laughs> so bad at this okay, wait wait maybe if I take this part in instead okay whatever it's tangled, but we'll make it work. And I'll use this little tiny, this little tiny one. Miriam, any tips for closing a magic loop with chunky yarn? I actually have a pattern, a video. It's going to come out this week, but it's going to come out the week next now because this week we're doing a Loop and Pearl podcast. We're actually filming it tonight. Um, yeah, if you want it, by the way, we have a podcast. Check it out, Loop and Pearl. Uh, you can go to clubcrochet.com slash podcast to find it. This is my favorite way to make the magic loop, Miriam, but it might be kind of tough with chunky yarn. So let me show you. You go around your index finger like that, you make an X, and you have two bars on the back. Now again, I have a tutorial coming out soon for this that's a little bit better. Um, the problem with this method for the magic loop is it might come apart with chunky yarn. So, uh, but you need it now. Okay, so. So this is the normal magic loop method. Let me show you that one first. So you got the two bars on the back, the X on the front. You take a crochet hook, you go under the first bar on the back of your finger, hook onto the second bar, and pull it under the first bar and do a loop like that. See the little loop? And then you grab a hold of the end that you pulled out going from over this bar like that. It's best to help it over with your index finger. And then you pull that end through the loop you made like that to make a chain and it you can pull off your finger then and then you have this nice magic loop that's really easy with only one end to pull it in and then you can just work all your stitches around this the problem with this is it might come apart a little bit miriam when you um especially with chunky yarn so here's my other way to do a magic loop which again there's a video coming out with a way more detailed tutorial but here's the other way to do it you hold your hand like a little, uh, like this, with with your index finger out like that. <laughs> it's boss, boss music, Hannah, boss music. So you hold your index finger out like that and you wrap around your index finger three times. One, two, three, like that. And then you take it over and you place it in between your middle and ring finger like that. And then you close your hand so that it's a little finger gun, right? Then you take your crochet hook 
And we're gonna go under the first two loops on your index finger. One, two, and then hook onto the third and pull that third one under the first two. And then go over the first two bars and hook on with that end that you just pulled through like that and pull that through the loop to make a chain like that. This is the second way to do magic loop. Now you can pull this off your finger and see how it's a little bit bigger. So the first magic loop method only had one of these loops. This one's got two. So it's a little harder to close it up, but it keeps it closed. Um, so it doesn't come loose. So then you work all your stitches. So I'm just gonna do six single crochets into this magic loop really quick. And I'll show you how to close it. That's the tricky part with this is how to close it. One, two, three, four, five, six, like that. And then here's how you close this. It's a little tricky. You pull the tail and one of these two bars is gonna get pulled in. Pay attention to which one it gets, gets pulled in and don't pull it too far, okay? So we're gonna pull it just a little bit and pay attention to which one of these gets pulled. Okay, so it's the inside one right here. So this inside one is getting pulled in. So what you wanna do is you wanna grab that inside one and pull it down from the bottom right here and it'll close the, the other loop. See how it's closing the first loop there? You wanna close it really tight and then now you can grab this tail end and pull it tight and it should pull that other loop nice and tight too. And that's how that's the other way to do a magic loop. And it's really nice because it keeps it closed. It's not going to come undone. Whereas the other magic loop can become a little sloopy, a little um, a little uh, looser. And here you go. I'm booping the snoot of the dragon. Boop. <laughs> okay, Miriam, I hope that helped. Um, again, a tutorial is coming out very soon for that. Okay, let's make this little miniature heart and then I'll call it. So for this, I'm using embroidery thread and a size 1.5, you can't even see it, but it says 1.5 millimeter. It's a number two crochet hook if you wanna make little ones too. That's that's what I most like using is embroidery thread with that. And I'm just gonna do a magic, regular magic loop like that. And we'll work our stitches into the magic loop. Okay. All right, now I'm just gonna do a little tiny heart. Now again, the tutorial for this heart is already out, so I'm not gonna teach you how to do this, um, this heart, but I'm going to make a little one. What's tricky is you gotta really pay attention to the stitches because it's so tiny. But what I think is really cool about doing it with this embroidery thread is you can make earrings like crazy quick. Look how fast I'm making these earrings. I'm gonna make it even bigger. I don't need, I can make it smaller than I'm going to make it. But we're gonna do it a little bit bigger instead. One, two, three. And then I'm gonna chain two, one, two. And then slip stitch one. tricky though it's tricky let me pull that tight let's do it again chain two one two actually chain three that's what it was i'm talking to myself i'm sorry then double look how quick i'm gonna have little earrings one Sometimes I wish I had my ears pierced for earrings, but my earlobes are so tiny. I don't think an earring would really work out for me. Ah. Oh, I goofed it. There we go. Single crochet. And then we'll pull it nice and tight. Like that. Even tighter. And then chain two. And slip stitch and then hide the end. stitch you know it doesn't get as frustrating as you'd think to make things this tiny hey dad welcome back my dad is back in the chat this part's pretty tough 
that. Let me cut it. Hide this end. I'm gonna use a smaller needle for this part. <laughs> my dad said, no, don't get an earring. I'm not gonna. Look how tiny my ears are. Look at that, look at that. You can barely even fit anything in there. When I was in high school, I wanted to get gauges though. But I knew my mom would kill me, so I never did. <gasps> Jules wants to say hi. Hi. Yeah. Look at what we Hello. made. I made this for you. Oh, you made something for me? Yes, <gasps> you made, I made you this altar oh, with a little rainbow it. heart. I love it. Thank there you. you. Go. Thanks. You just finished it? Yeah. Like this second? Like a few seconds ago, yeah. Holy Toledo. And then now Wait, I'm making... They see the whole thing? Yeah, we should. We can Duh. leave it. We can leave it, and I'll give it to you back after the. This chair is so big, I can never like pop in. Hello. I know. I need to get a new chair. I squished. What I are you squished. doing now? I'm making a very itty bitty itty itsy bitsy heart. Itsy bitsy heart. Yeah. Oh, that looks hard. Hi everybody. It's not. You know, it's actually Hi, not that tough. Hi Mel Bell. Hi Hannah. Hi Ziva. All these people. Oh my gosh. So many highs. Hi, Jane. Hello, 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 hello. Little tiny heart. Little so tiny. cute. Oh my god, that's the tiniest. And it's it's actually really quick to make. So look, like, yeah. I, that took me like I don't know five minutes maybe. Wow. You can I'll, make so many. I of them. haven't seen, I haven't seen this pink one. That was from the live stream last week. Oh, or last, so two cute. weeks ago. I know. Oh, right? thanks for the belated birthdays. That's really sweet. Thank yes, you. someone gave. Uh, Happy someone heart donated day. twenty dollars, mm -hmm. and ten was for me and ten was for you. <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do. Well, I'll buy something for dinner for us. Okay. That's it. That's awesome. For Valentine's <laughs> dinner. What do you think you want? I don't know. I don't either. Mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. I always want mac and cheese. <laughs> That's true. She, she's a mac and cheese fiend. I really, I really like my cheese, <laughs> and I like it on noodles the best. Yeah. <laughs> Look at all these people. Hello, what about hello. pizza? No, oh, you can't have, can't, have you can't have pizza. Can't have pizza. No pizza. No pizza. I'm on a very strict diet. Gotta keep it up. Gotta be it's a good girl. Itsy bitsy heart. Itsy bitsy. Okay, oh, I just so want to say tiny. hi and do this. Yes. Yuck Happy nasty, Valentine's gross. Day. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Act actually, it. That's also gonna be it for me. There we go. My dad said, "Wait, where have you been?" <laughs> It's always funny, whenever I crochet on this blue stuff, I can do this, and it like all the fuzz from what we crocheted with gets like turned into lint. I have to pick it off with it. Look at that. Probably Jimbo hair. Okay guys. Well thank you so much for watching. I think we did a pretty successful heart in this video. Next Sunday, we'll be back with another live stream. I don't know what we're going to make yet. Oh, wait. I wanted to show you this. Check this out. Just take these hearts out. What's cool about these magnet otters is if you make two of them, you can have them holding hands. Isn't that cute? They hold hands. <laughs> Just like real otters. You know otters do that? They hold hands while they sleep, while they're swimming, so they don't float away from each other. It's so sweet. Okay. Well, anyhow. To hold this heart together. That's so sweet. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. That was a pretty fun one. I got some ideas for what we're going to do next week, but I'm not like 100% sure yet. So hold tight um, and look out this week. I'll, I'll, I'll try to make it so that it's a little earlier. Um, it's, it's in the subscription feed a little earlier but if you're not yet please subscribe down below and hit the little notification bell we are almost we are so close to 100,000 subscribers which is freaking crazy so if you're not subscribed yet please do and obviously like this video if you haven't yet please like it and thank you to everybody who's watched everybody who's joined and a special special thank you to everybody who has donated thank you so much for your donations Next week, we will have a brand new halftime show giveaway. So keep an eye out for that giveaway. 
And, uh, yeah. Bye, everybody. Pasta pizza. Happy hooking. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. Ready? 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 <laughs> that was silly. All right. Bye, guys.